Adobe came out with Captivate Draft a couple of years ago. Around that time, I decided to learn the software and I took it with me on vacation to Mexico. While there on the beach, I actually created a storyboard for a project that I was working on. And I just got back from vacation now, so I thought, what better opportunity than right now to review Captivate Draft a couple of years later. So let's take a look at it. So I've got my iPad mini connected here and we can see that I've got the Captivate Draft uh, application installed. We'll just tap on that. It'll open up a new instance of Adobe Captivate Draft. Very lovely dramatic uh, entrance there. You can see I've got a few drafts of various things on the page here. Let's start off by creating a new storyboard and we'll start from scratch. So what we're seeing here is the interface on the very first slide of a new Captivate Draft storyboard. Before we get into it though, I do want to say that it's not just storyboard creation. I found Captivate Draft to be useful for keeping track of information, recording audio recordings, um, keeping all of my notes together, and generally using it like a e-learning scratch pad, if you will. Uh, essentially part of the e-learning tool belt that I keep with me at all times. So let's start off on, under the assumption that we are making a storyboard in this case. The first thing I might want to do is pick a color or background or an image to use for this first slide. So I'm going to long press onto the first slide and you'll notice that the toolbar on the right hand side just changed. And I can do one of two things. I can either select a fill color of my choosing, whatever it might be, or I can select an image from my gallery or from the camera itself live. In this case, I'll choose gallery. And let's pick something uh, kind of nice here. Let's choose, uh, let's say, one of those beach shots there. That looks cool. So this will be the background for my title page. What else do I need? Well, I need, of course, uh, a title itself. So you can do titles one of two ways. If you notice in the upper right hand corner, there's a question mark icon. If I tap on that, that gives me a preview of all the drawing gestures that are available. Text is the bottom left hand corner, so I could just do a squiggly little line. Alternatively, I could tap on text from the left toolbar and it would create a placeholder for that text object. Let's try the squiggly little line approach. So I'll just doodle that there. There's my text right there and I can, of course can resize and reposition uh, this text uh, shape here. And let's go in and change it to Helvetica. Maybe what we'll do is we'll make it italic and bold. And uh, let's choose a, th a font size that's going to be appropriate for a course title. Again, we can reposition this or resize it. And let's actually change the color to something that contrasts the background quite nicely. I'm going to double tap on this, and this will allow me to replace the ipsum lorem text there with something more appropriate. So we'll just call this course title. If I minimize my keyboard, it returns back there and I can, I'm pretty happy with that there. So the next thing we can do is start to build our additional slides. And there's a tray, as you can see the plus with a uh, three vertical line icon uh, on the right hand section of the of the slide here. I can tap the plus to just quickly create a new slide or I can slide this control out and then add a blank slide using the buttons on the bottom. I'm going to use that method and again we're given a completely blank slide here so again I'm going to long press choose, uh, in this case here, let's choose a color. Um, in fact, I'll choose something from my library because I have some favorite colors here that I like to use. And there we have our second slide. Now I'm going to just go back to the regular view here 
and slide out my my drawer again from the side here and go back to slide one for a moment because one of the things you might want to do is give your uh, learners um, a navigational element that allows them to click next to go to the next slide. So I'm going to create that and I'm going to do it a number of different ways. The reason I created a second slide is that you really can't create a navigation control unless you have more than one slide. So let's start off by creating a circle and uh, or in this case an oval. I'm going to resize this to be nice and small here. And I'm going to put that roughly in the middle there. Again, it's just a storyboard. doesn't have to be perfect. How am I going to fill this? Well, in this case here, I'm actually going to use an image fill. Something interesting that I shot on vacation here. Uh, let's try this item here. Just an interesting background. Almost looks like a lens effect. I'm going to put a, um, a stroke around it, perhaps a reddish color, and we'll just make that a little thicker. And if you tap any object, you'll get this additional toolbar that's specific to that object. So in this case here, I'm going to add some text, and I'm not going to use conventional text. I'm actually going to use a right arrow, place that there. Again, I'm going to minimize my keyboard, and if I tap my object and then tap it once again, I can select the text that is now part of that object, and we can do a number of things to that. We can, of course, make it bold, and then what we'll do is we'll um, increase its size. We'll change its color first uh, to something that will contrast that background. Maybe... Maybe the red there would be a good choice. And uh, we'll choose a larger size so it stands out. There's our next button. And of course, once you're back in Captivate, you might replace this with something else. Now, with this selected, you can see that the, the toolbar that's available also has a little star with a dotted line with selection handles around it. That's the icon for navigation controls. So if I tap on that, I can select slide two as the destination if my user clicks this button. So there's my title slide that looks quite good. I'm actually gonna select this item again because I'm gonna use this on following slides. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use that first icon, that copy icon, and then return to the normal navigation controls. We'll go over to slide two and using the clipboard that's now available, the clipboard icon on the left toolbar, I can now paste that particular object onto this slide. So there's all sorts of um, controls that are available to you. You've seen a few already. Obviously shapes are available and you can add let's say a rectangle, or you can draw a gesture to create uh, a triangle. And let's change the color of that to something different. And of course I could also adjust the, the, uh, the rectangle that I created. We'll choose a different color for that. And you can see these two objects overlap one another, but perhaps I intended for them to overlap differently. Again, I can use that individual object toolbar to use the, the layer or the uh, move up or move down controls for that. So let's make the triangle, the background, and the rectangle in the foreground. Let's slide out our tray here. And I'm going to long press on my slides and actually make a copy of slide two. And we're going to go now to what is now slide three. Now let's delete these objects because they're from slide two. And let's take a look at some of the other objects that are available to you. So from the multimedia icon, I can select an image placeholder. And of course you can 
reposition and resize this accordingly to what is appropriate for your particular project. And you'll notice that with that selected, I can choose either to take a picture with the inbuilt camera, or I can select something I've already taken a photo of um, from my gallery of images. So let's choose an image here. In this case here, I'll choose the swimming pool at the resort there. Beautiful, fantastic. And so I'm happy with that. Let's move over to this. And again, we'll uh, make a copy of the this slide here. So I will delete this object by throwing that in the trash. And what can we do here? Well, let's take a look at the other multimedia items that are available. So I can add a video to this slide. Again, you can uh, reposition and resize that video. Uh, you can shoot, uh, you can actually shoot video live from the camera, again, built into your, your I, iPad or other device. And uh, alternatively, you can select something that's already been recorded. So in this case here, I'll just take a, little video snippet that I recorded on the beach. Now you can see that this particular video is um, not proportioned properly for the placeholder. So of course I can resize that so that it is. Again, this is only a storyboard, not something to be overly too concerned about. Let's tap away and bring out our tray again. And I'm going to long press on the latest slide and make a copy of that again. So I'm going to select this. I'm going to use the trash can to delete it. And now, of course, I have uh, another blank slide that I can add additional content to. So let's try something else. In this case here, the third option for the multimedia is for recording audio. And again, I don't think you're ne necessarily going to be out in the field or on the beach in Mexico recording the narration that's actually going to reside in your e-learning course. But what you might be doing is conducting interviews with subject matter experts or other employees, or you might just be recording ideas. And again, this is where the using this tool as um, a scratch pad or e-learning toolkit, if you will, is a, a great way to also use this application. So let's tap on the microphone. You'll see the start recording indicator show up with a timer at the bottom. If I press the red record button, it switches to a, uh, a rectangle and it starts to record my voice using the microphone that's built into your iOS device. Once you've finished, you can press stop and you're given the option to play back that recording or delete that recording or record again. Tapping anywhere outside of these controls will return you to the normal slide view. And you can know that there is an audio recording on this slide from the icon that's located in the upper right hand corner. Let's slide out our tray once again and we'll long press on the last slide and duplicate that. I'm going to tap on that recording and delete it and return to the normal slide view just by tapping on a blank space here. The last of the multimedia items is actually a web object and you can place that uh, somewhere on your screen and resize it if you think it's important. Now it won't function as a web object while in the storyboard mode but this is a great way to capture web addresses if you need them. So if you're out in the field doing your analysis, doing your, your uh, discovery, if you will, and you learn that there's a great website that's available and might be useful to learners, again, we're going to tap on this web object, bring up the toolbar for it, and go to the text icon that you see there, third item in, and we can now replace that default web address with something that is meaningful for your learners. So that's it for the objects that you can add to regular slides. Let's take a look at the quiz elements that are available to you as well. Again, I'm going to slide out my tray from the right hand side here, and you'll see there's the option to add 
a question slide. And of course, you can long press on this and change the background color as we did before. But uh, when you're working with a true false question, for example, you can edit, of course, the title. You can edit the question stem itself. And you can change what the correct answer is by clicking on the radio button that's appropriate. So that works quite easily. Uh, along the bottom, you can change a true false into a multiple choice, as I've done here. Uh, once again, you can edit all of the elements. And in the case of a multiple choice, you can also change the number of answers. Uh, to do so, press the Q icon on your left-hand toolbar, and that's going to bring up an answers option on your right-hand toolbar, and simply increase that number to a number that's appropriate. So in this case here, this is a single answer multiple choice, but by tapping on the checkboxes, I can easily turn it into a multiple answer question as well, and I certainly can unselect any of those checkboxes. There has to always be one checkbox selected, so if you want to change it from the default checkbox number one, you need to select two, three, or four first, and then unselect the one that, uh, that you started with. Matching is available as well, and like before, you can increase the number of answers as you see fit. And lastly, there's sequence questions where you can have users put items in the correct sequence. And again, you can increase the number of answers available to them as well. Once you have a storyboard that you're ready to share with your subject matter experts and your stakeholders, you're going to want to email it to them. And the little email envelope icon on the top toolbar is useful for that. So I'm going to tap on that now. I'm going to, it's going to return me to the main page. And of course, I can now add my reviewers and give them a deadline as to when I need their review by. Then I simply send, and what will happen is the users will receive an email where they'll be able to preview this storyboard right from within their browser. So I've switched over from my iPad over to my regular desktop, and as you can see, I've received an invitation to review this particular Captivate draft file. And even if you don't have Adobe Captivate or Adobe Captivate Draft installed, uh, your subject matter experts and stakeholders will be able to log in using either uh, an Adobe ID, uh, which of course is free to create, or a Google Plus account. And once they're logged in, they'll be able to preview the entire draft storyboard just as you saw it. If you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at paulwilsonlearning.com, follow me on Twitter at paulwilsonld, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.